I ran 101 miles in 19 hours and six minutes unprepared. Myself, pissed blood down my leg, had 30 miles to go. Horrible, worst pain in my entire life. In that 19 hours and six minutes, and that's all it was, I lived 100 years. I was able to pack 100 years in 19 hours and six minutes. All the emotions, the highs, the lows, the, the, the trauma, the failure, the success, the victories, everything you can put in a life, I put it in 19 hours and six minutes. And the beauty that comes out the other side of that, what happens in that time frame when you're at mile 70 and you're all f***ed up and your body is destroyed and you have 31 miles to go and you're not 31 miles to go, you're in the worst shape of your life with 31 miles to go. It's in that 31 miles that I was able to crack open another part of the human mind. A part that very few people are able to examine because why? They're not willing to go there. Like back to the rock. I guarantee you, when he was climbing that thing and he had ropes on, he was thinking, I can only imagine this is going to be with no ropes at all. Making some of these moves that I'm falling with ropes. You have to go to a different focus. The, the focus has to be so heightened that very few people, they even understand that, but they have it in them. They have it in them to go there, but you have to go to a place of fear, of suffering, of pain, of doubt. And that's when your mind, if it, if it knows it's not gonna quit, it opens up. And once it opens up, that's my 40% rule. Once you can open, open your mind up when it knows it's not gonna quit, it finds more. It finds more focus, it finds more power, it finds more drive. And that's what gets you through the 31 miles. That's, that's, that's what gets him so hyper-focused on that one little nodule to put his finger on. And that's what you find in those moments. But without those moments, you don't know what you're capable of because mm. you're living a very uh, structured life mm. without risk. It's not addictive at all because um, you don't want to live there, you know, but it's definitely a place that makes you look at people very differently. Because once you see, it's different if, if I was born with a silver spoon and everything was given to me and life came easy. But knowing where I came from and where I'm at now, just because I was able to crack open a few more doors, that's what's disappointing for me, for other people. You know, so it's not that I want to live there. I know I can go there. Mm. And once again, I know other people can go there. So I guess that's the thing with me is, that, is I know I have the ability now to go to a place that's very, very hyper-focused that I can accomplish some pretty amazing feats. Not because I'm amazing, because I allowed my mind to be open-minded for the possibilities of what can I achieve. Mm. Well, the thing about it is funny, man, all these uh, catchphrases, people always say, you know, failure is a part of life and failure is how you grow. I've said all that stuff before, but it really is a bunch of it really is, man. I'm so tired of hearing all these fucking cliche, fucking, you know, like goal setting, fucking posters, and all that. Half the people who write this shit aren't even doing what they're talking about. Mm. Half the people talk about failure, you know, they're fucking millionaires sitting back at some nice house, whatever the fuck they're talking about. So it, it just it, it makes me nuts. The reason why. I believe I can talk on failures because I'm still failing today and I'm failing in a major way and I'm, and I'm living when I'm talking. So many people who talk about all this shit, they're, they're has-beens. They're people who used to do back in the day and not talk about it. Are you living it today? So for me, failure is, um, is something that you should be afraid of. It should be afraid of, but that's why you should go out there and challenge yourself to fail. Because if you're not failing at something, that means you've set your goals to pass, to succeed at everything you do, which means you're not setting your goals high enough. So for me, okay, I'm gonna go out and break the Ginsburg like rules record for pull-ups. Lofty goal, which is why I failed it twice before I finally got it. Mm. I knew going into everything I've ever done in my life, Navy SEAL training, three times before I got it. Mm. Everything I've ever done in my life took me three times before I got it. I knew that there was a huge possibility of failure. Mm. But what I gained from failure is this. When you see a movie and you watch a movie about a person who keeps failing, and at the end, 
they succeed. How do you feel after you watch that movie? Amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. I become the movie. Mm. I want to feel how I feel watching someone else in the movie. Mm. When I watched Rocky get his ass kicked and I watched all these different things of failure, I was able to put myself there and say, God, man, how much do you feel now that you finally got there? That's what failure has done to me. I've watched so many things and watched someone succeed at the end of it. It's like, God, I want to feel like that. Mm. But failure causes that one feeling. Mm. Without that failure involved, you don't have that feeling. Mm. If you just pass and you succeed and you're great, that feeling, yeah, okay, I'm good. Mm. What takes you years, months, years to accomplish because you just can't get over the hump, but you continue going back to the drawing board. You're looking for those few seconds after you finally figure out the equation, whatever the equation may be to get you to finally pass, to succeed. Mm. I live for that feeling, mm. but I can't get that feeling without going through. I felt this equation. I felt this one. I felt this one. I felt this one. Oh, I'm figuring it out. Mm. So you start to feel it before you even pass, before you even get to, to, to the success part. And then once you succeed, the feeling is unbelievable. Mm. And you take that feeling of success through failure and you put it in your cookie jar. And you say, I'll, I'll come back and get you again. I'm going to need you again down the road in my life mm. to call on you. Most of us fail in life because we're afraid of what everyone around you is thinking. Mm. That's a hundred percent truth. So we live by the narrative of other people. When you get to the point where you really don't care, you don't have to say you're it. dangerous. <laughs> you become very, very dangerous. Mm. I'm not saying don't care. Like, I don't care if I do that. No, when you don't care about other people and how they view you mm. about how you walk, how you talk, how you dress, where you want to go with your life. You know, growing up, I didn't want to tell anybody I wanted to be in the military. Because why? Some of my black friends, I was afraid of what they think. Mm. You know, why do you want to join the fucking military, man? Why the fuck you want to do this shit? Mm. I was afraid of what other people thought about me. So now, when I go in the military, I know you want to fucking join the military. Yeah, I ain't tell you because I'm afraid of what you thought. Once again, man, you're allowing other people to shackle your mind. Mm. It's, the, it's, the, it's the worst thing in the world. If your fiance and your kids don't believe in you, you can't care what they think. That means you chose the wrong support staff. There has to be, so that's why a lot of people don't understand one another. Your support staff has to be like, if I want to go out and do whatever it is, my support staff is, you know, my fiance. If she's like, you know what, you know, I don't think that you should be doing that. I have to take it, you know, why? So I can be open-minded. So, so, so why are you saying this? But if she's saying it because of her, you know, that's not, that's not the right thing. Because I need backing to do what I'm going to do. Mm. Open-mindedness. I need support. So, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, you got to be very clear thinking about all that stuff. Mm. My circle is very small. I make sure I didn't handpick these people. Because I'm like, so, so you don't want people in your corner that are like, oh, let me pat you on the back for whatever the f you do. I don't want people patting me on the fucking back because I fucking woke up in the morning. No. So you don't want that. Mm. You want people who are honest with you, who are going to tell you what the fuck is honest. Mm. Honest and truthful people. So someone who's honest and truthful, who has lived and is accountable for their own personal life, that's who you want in your corner. Say, hey, man, you know what? You're pretty dumb for doing this, dude. Like, this is not smart. Or you're being a, you know, you're being a turd today. You're not getting after it. That's who you want in your corner. Mm. So you don't want a lot of people handpick people to be in the corner who kiss the ass. Mm. You don't want that. No. No. You have to. So one of my big, one of my best qualities is I'm open-minded to the right people. Mm. But I don't respect a lot of people. Because mm. how am I going to respect you if you're not fucking grinding every day? Mm. And I don't mean working out, getting to the gym. Really going out there and grinding. So if you don't know how I'm living my life, how am I going to respect you? So you have to be a hard worker, period, dot. You got to work your ass off. That's where I gain respect for you. Mm. So if you're working hard every day, 
Now you have an opinion in my eyes.